tribute to Richard Whiteley is at four. After the last programme, Richard recorded for us the countdown grand final. Ladies and gentlemen of Countdownia, welcome to this, the 53rd Grand Final of Countdown. <laughs> yes, this is the final that everyone's talking about. Who cares about the tennis? That's a minor final. This is the great <laughs> final, the great final of the great British summer, because our quest to find uh, another champion of Countdown is almost at an end, and in a little more than 40 minutes or so, one person, who will be called John, <laughs> will take away the coveted prize of these collector's dictionaries. As well, of course, as the distinction of becoming overall champion of this series of Countdown. Our much acclaimed finalists, so please greet and applaud John Braxton and John Mayhew. Yes, the two Johns are, are left. Appropriately, they are number one and number two seed. That doesn't always happen. When it does happen, I suppose it's very neat. So we're delighted to have them here, and uh, I'm sure you're delighted to be here as well. <laughs> but uh, what, a, what a journey they've had. Let me just remind you of their journey. Uh, John Mayhew. John is from Plymouth, and he scrapped, kicked, and clawed his way into this final with a heart-stopping win yesterday over teen idol John O'Neill. So his record now stands at 10 wins out of 10, a points total of 1,087. That's our number two seed, the Plymouth pulverizer, John Mayhew. <laughs> and now, John Braxton. <laughs> there is a smiling man. He, of course, is the most famous pub landlord in Wales, certainly the most pub landlord in Pontypool, eh? Yeah. By gum, I bet you can't get into that pub at the moment. There's such a, there's such a cult of personality, the George in Pontypool. Now, John had a nerve-wracking time, just like the other John, John Mayhew, on Wednesday to get to this final. His record now stands at played 10, won 10, with a points uh, haul of 987. So that's our number one seed, the Pontypool Pontiff, Wales's finest, Mr John Braxton. <laughs> Apart from these fantastic guys, and we've had actually six Octavians. We had one young man who wasn't an Octavian, but goodness gracious, didn't he, didn't he win the hearts of the nation? And here he is, yes, he's our, he's our idol. There he is, Tan May Dixit. Hello, Tan May. Hello. And he's come to watch the final. Hello, how are you? I'm fine. Yeah, did you, do you wish you were here with me on the final? Yes. Oh. <laughs> yes, you only won, say only won two games, but uh, uh, perhaps... Uh, who knows, one day we might bend the rules and get the champions back again. Uh, by the way, um, have you washed your mouth out with soap and water? <laughs> <laughs> All right, and just let's have another look at what we're playing for today. This is, these are the dictionaries. 20 volumes, leather-bound, gold-embossed, the Oxford English Dictionary, a collector's item, and uh, this, a world-class a world prize. All right, and we have a world-class uh, team in Dictionary Corner, as always. So uh, I'm normally a bit flippant about you, uh, Philip, but uh, I have to say you're a terrific supporter of Countdown. You've been here many a year. You bring a lot of work to a lot of charm and a lot of intellect. It's Philip Franks and Susie Dent. Thank you very much, Richard. That's very, very kind of you. Uh, last time I was a, a, a guest in Dictionary Corner at Finals Day, it, it was decided on the conundrum, so my palms are sweating already. All right. Well, we've had Best these two semi-finals decided on the conundrum, so let's now start now. John Mayhew is number two seed. I called you Big John yesterday. I don't know what to call you. What would you like to be called today? Smaller John? <laughs> I don't know. I'm, I'm think, not too sure, really. I'll think of something. Don't worry. <laughs> anyway, it's John Mayhew to go first. OK. Uh, go for a consonant, please, Carol. A consonant. We start, then, with F. And another one, please. S. And a third one. L. And 
I'll go for a fourth one as well. T. And a vowel. E. And a second one. U. And a third one. A. And a consonant. Y. And better be another consonant, please. And T. Thank you. Thank you. Let's start the clock. John M. Um, eight. Eight for John M. John B. Just six. Just six. Here, John B. Six. Uh, faults. Faults. Yeah. Yeah. Here, the, the eight. Not my usual style, but I'll be tasteful this time. <laughs> oh, tasteful. Very, very good. good. Yep. Yeah. Could have had astutely, which would be equally appropriate, but um, very good eight. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's good. Yes, certainly a good eight to start with. So well done. Thank you. Eights on your scoreboard. Now then, John B. Please. Uh, consonant, please, Carl. M. And another. P. And another. N. And a uh, vowel. O. And another. E. And a third. And O. And a consonant. C. And a consonant. S. And a final consonant, please. And a consonant. That's T. Thank you. Here we go. John B. Uh, seven. And John M? Yeah, safe seven. OK, go to John B, seven. Uh, compose. Compose, yeah. And moonset. Moon, yes. You know, it's my favourite word, yes. moonset. I love moonset. Lovely name, word, moonset. It's romantic. Moonset and compose, Philip? There, well, there is an eight. Um, from the world of pureed fruit, uh, we have compots. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Didn't have a little accent over yeah, it. Yeah, I looked for the circumflex, but it's been naturalised so much that it's lost it. Oh, it's lost so, its yeah, circumflex. No circumflex anymore. That's, ter that's terrible. <laughs> All right. Well, we've got seven apiece there. Good. Now then, John M, please. Constant, please, Carol. R. And a second one. G. And a third one. L. And a fourth one again. R. <laughs> and a vowel. E. And a second vowel. I. And a third bell. E. A consonant. D. And a consonant, please. And P. Thank you. Starting the clock. Seven. John B. And seven. John M. Seven. Replied. Replied. Yours, John? Same word. Yes, sir. Good. Philip? Yeah. Um, we, we can't do better than seven. You could have had pledger, one who pledges as well, uh, but seven, extremely good. Thank, thank you. So, replied, pledger. We're, we're on the sevens. We can't get better than seven. So, moving on to round four, John B.'s choice. Uh, consonant, please. N. And another. M. And another. R. And a vowel. I. And a vowel. A. 
and another vowel. E. And a consonant. D. And a consonant. N. And a final vowel, please. And A. Thank you. Here we go. John B. Uh, eight. Eight. John N. Uh, eight. Yep. Last minute. Oh, I haven't written it down. So. What is it then? Marinade. Oh, marinade. Yep. Yes. And the same word. It certainly is marinade. Perfect. Very good indeed. Absolutely fine. Yeah. Um, it really is excellent. However, a little glimmer of smugness around dictionary corner. We've we've got a nine, uh, which we insultingly describe as a small fat fruit with yellowish skin. It's mandarin, but with an E on the end. Mandarin, it's an alternative spelling. Yeah. Good morning. Well, who would have thought about that? Yes, mandarin. Good. Well, that was a nine, but we've got eights here, so excellent. Um, now, John M., you're choosing numbers. OK. Keep it as simple as possible, please. One, One from, from the top, top and any of a five. OK. Thank you. Right, boys, six and six, one and five, two and twenty-five, and a target, first time around, nice, very nice indeed, one, five, eight. Yeah, okay, one, five, eight, one, five, eight. One five eight, John M. One five eight, John B. Uh, One five eight. Go on, John B. Uh, six times twenty five. Hundred and fifty. Plus two, plus five, plus one. Oh no, it's nice, isn't it, <laughs> to start? Yes, one five eight. Yeah, it's nice, isn't it, John M. Well, identical apart from saying plus six, plus two at the end. Yeah. Rather than Fair enough. Yes. One five eight. All right. Well, they can only get harder, I suppose, can't they? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and that's a good 10 points, so it looks very good. 40 and 32. All right, well, a little breather there in the final. Let's just hand over to you, Philip, for the last time. Yes, it does seem completely presumptuous to interrupt as nail-biting a contest like this uh, with one of my stupid and pointless games, but uh, here goes anyway. This is another uh, uh, What Links game. I've been doing a couple of these recently, uh, so uh, please, no guessing before the break, I beg of you. Uh, and I would like you to think, please, What Links, the following. Nelson... Orwell's Gin, Throat Sweets, Joseph Conrad, and Today. That's Nelson, Orwell's Gin, Throat Sweets, Joseph Conrad, and Today. Uh, I'll tell you in a short while. Meanwhile, um, let's momentarily ease the tension, I hope, rather than ratchet, ratcheting it up. Here's a poem by my old favourite Ogden Nash, appropriate for the 1st of July. It's about summer. It goes like this. Well, 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 so this is summer. Isn't that mirabile dick too? And these are the days that whatever you sit down on, you stick to. And some insomniacs woo insomnia plus pyjamas, and some others minus. And everybody patronises air-conditioned shops and movies to get cool, and then complains that the difference in temperature gives them lumbago and sinus. <laughs> and people trapped in doorways by thunderstorms console themselves by saying, well, anyway, this will cool it off while we wait. So, during the storm, the mercury plunges from 94 to 93, and afterwards climbs immediately to 98. <laughs> but these estival phenomena amaze me not. What does amaze me is how every year people are amazed to discover that summer is hot. <laughs> very good. I don't know how you find these. They're very good. <laughs> All right, well, that, that's a good one. Now, this is a nice one here. Reno rips. Reno rips, that's for Caesar. This is the clue. He might talk about terms and conditions. Well, it's 
it's, uh, it's, yeah, it's a prisoner, isn't it? A prisoner, and a prisoner might well talk about terms and conditions, I think. Prisoner. All right, that's our little bit of fun. Here's Philip's big bit of fun. Yeah, and the answer to my poser is an appropriate one for today, I hope. I gave you a list of Nelson, Orwell's Gin, Throat Sweets, Joseph Conrad, and Today. Now, I might have added to that list matches Thomas Hardy and contemporary playwright Howard Barker, because the answer is, of course, victory. So that's three fictional works, one ship, one Lucifer, one lozenge, one drink from 1984, and pretty soon now, what's going to be tasted by one of the contestants on my left. Mm. That's victory. <laughs> Very good. Well done. Uh, well, it's yes, all we know, it's good. it can be called John, as I keep saying, but it, that's absolutely fact, we know, it's absolutely true. So, John Mayhew is our number two seed on 40, John Brackstone, number one seed on 32. Round six, first of the second half, it's John B to go. Uh, consonant, please. L. And another. R. And a third. N. And a vowel. E. And a vowel. O. And third vowel. E. And a consonant. T. And a consonant. L. And a final consonant, please. And S. Thank you. Counting down. John B. Risk of seven. Good. John M. Seven. Risky seven. Uh, Renotes. John M. Relents. Relents. Yeah, relents, fine. Um, remote, obviously, but no renote. Um, certainly not as a verb, I'm afraid. Bad luck, John. Phil. There's an eight. There is an eight. It's another word for uh, the mezzanine floor of a building, the floor between the ground floor and the first floor, and it's entresol. Mm. E N T R E S O L, um, entresol. Laced row between the ground floor and the first floor. Yep. So. Okay, well, eight to be had. Um, points there for John M. And we move to you, John M., for your letters. Constant, please, Carol. J. Lovely. Uh, second one, please. L. And the third one. S. And as it's J, we go for fourth one, please. And P. And the vowel? O. And the second one? E. And the first one? And I. And consonant? C. And a consonant, please. And W. Thank you. Here we go. Now, John M. Seven. Seven. John B. And seven. Okay. John M. Polices. 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 And yours? Uh, the same word. Certainly did. Polices, Philip. Yeah, police is very good. Um, you could also have had cowslip for seven, and we thought for one marvellous moment that you could have had what Desperate Dan used to eat, cow pies, ah. but it's not in the dictionary, unfortunately. No, it's in there, but it's two words. It's two words. Two words. <laughs> Right, well, that's another seven, so we go on by that seven. 54, 39, very good. Let's have John B's letters. Uh, consonant, please. V. And another. H. And another. N. And a vowel. A. And another. E. And a third. O. And a consonant. M. And a consonant. F. And a final vowel. And another vowel. E. And a consonant. D. And a consonant. N. 
And the final vowel, please. And A. Thank you. Here we go. John B. Uh, eight. Eight. John M. Uh, eight. Yep. Last minute. Oh, I haven't written it down. So. What is it then? Marinade. Oh, marinade. Yep. Yes. And the same word. It certainly is marinade. Perfect. Very good indeed. Absolutely fine. Yeah. That um, really is excellent. However, a little glimmer of smugness around dictionary corner. We've we've got a nine, uh, which we'd insultingly describe as a small fat fruit with yellowish skin. It's mandarin, but with an E on the end. Mandarin, it's an alternative spelling. Yeah. Good morning. Well, who would have thought about that? Yes, mandarin. Good. Well, that was a nine, but we've got eights here, so excellent. Um, now, John M., you're choosing numbers. OK. Keep it as simple as possible, please. One, One from the top, top and any of a five. OK. Thank you. Right, boys, six and six, one and five, two and twenty-five, and a target, first time around, nice, very nice indeed, one, five, eight. Yeah, okay, one, five, eight, one, five, eight. Righty, 158, John M. 158. John B. Uh, 158. Go on, John B. Uh, 6 times 25. 150. Plus 2, plus 5, plus 1. Oh, no, it's nice, wasn't it, <laughs> to start? Yes, 158. Yeah, it's nice, isn't it? John M. Well, identical apart from saying plus 6, plus 2 at the end. Yeah. Rather than... Fair enough, yes. 158. All right, well, they can only get harder, I suppose, can't they? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and that's a good 10 points, so it looks very good. 40 and 32. All right, well, a little breather there in the final. Let's just hand over to you, Philip, for the last time. Yes, it does seem completely presumptuous to interrupt as nail-biting a contest like this uh, with one of my stupid and pointless games, but uh, here goes anyway. This is another uh, uh, What Links game. I've been doing a couple of these recently, uh, so uh, please, no guessing before the break, I beg of you. Uh, and I would like you to think, please, What Links, the following. Nelson... Orwell's Gin, Throat Sweets, Joseph Conrad, and Today. That's Nelson, Orwell's Gin, Throat Sweets, Joseph Conrad, and Today. Uh, I'll tell you in a short while. Meanwhile, um, let's momentarily ease the tension, I hope, rather than ratchet, ratcheting it up. Here's a poem by my old favourite Ogden Nash, appropriate for the 1st of July. It's about summer. It goes like this. Well, 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 so this is summer. Isn't that mirabile dick too? And these are the days that whatever you sit down on, you stick to. And some insomniacs woo insomnia plus pyjamas, and some others minus. And everybody patronises air-conditioned shops and movies to get cool, and then complains that the difference in temperature gives them lumbago and sinus. <laughs> and people trapped in doorways by thunderstorms console themselves by saying, well, anyway, this will cool it off while we wait. So, during the storm, the mercury plunges from 94 to 93, and afterwards climbs immediately to 98. Mm -hmm. But these estival phenomena amaze me not. What does amaze me is how every year people are amazed to discover that summer is hot. <laughs> very good. I don't know how you find these. They're very good. <laughs> All right, well, that, that's a good one. Now, this is a nice one here. Reno rips. Reno rips, that's the Caesar. This is the clue. He might talk about terms and conditions. Well, it 
is, uh, it's, yeah, it's a prisoner, isn't it? A prisoner, and a prisoner might well talk about terms and conditions, I think. Prisoner. All right, that's our little bit of fun. Here's Philip's big bit of fun. Yeah, and the answer to my poser is an appropriate one for today, I hope. I gave you a list of Nelson, Orwell's Gin, Throat Sweets, Joseph Conrad, and Today. Now, I might have added to that list matches Thomas Hardy and contemporary playwright Howard Barker, because the answer is, of course, victory. So that's three fictional works, one ship, one Lucifer, one lozenge, one drink from 1984, and pretty soon now, what's going to be tasted by one of the contestants on my left. Mm. That's victory. <laughs> Very good. Well done. Uh, well, it's yes, all we know, it's it can be called John, as I keep saying, but it, that's absolutely fact we know, it's absolutely true. So, John Mayhew is our number two seed on 40, John Brackstone, number one seed on 32. Round six, first of the second half, it's John B to go. Uh, consonant, please. L. And another. R. And a third. N. And a vowel. E. And a vowel. O. And a third vowel. E. And a consonant. T. And a consonant. L. And a final consonant, please. And S. Thank you. Counting down. John B. Risk of seven. Good. John M. Seven. Risky seven. Uh, re notes. John M. Relents. Relents. Yeah, relents, fine. Um, remote, obviously, but no re note. Um, certainly not as a verb, I'm afraid. Bad luck, John. Phil. There's an eight. There is an eight. It's another word for uh, the mezzanine floor of a building, the floor between the ground floor and the first floor, and it's entresol. Mm. E-N-T-R-E-S-O-L, um, entresol, laced row between the ground floor and the first floor. Yep. So. OK, well, eight to be had. Um, points there for John M. And we move to you, John M, for your letters. Constant, please, Carol. J. Lovely. Uh, second one, please. L. And the third one. S. And as it's J, we go for fourth one, please. And P. And the vowel. O. And the second one. E. And the third one. And I. And consonant. C. And a consonant, please. And W. Thank you. Here we go. Now, John M. Seven. Seven. John B. And seven. OK. John M. Polices. 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 And yours? Uh, the same word. Certainly did. Polices, Philip. Yeah, polices is very good. Um, you could also have had cowslip for seven. And we thought for one marvellous moment that you could have had what desperate Dan used to eat, cow pies, ah. but it's not in the dictionary, unfortunately. No, it's in there, but it's two words. Love cow pie. It's two words. <laughs> two words. <laughs> Right, well, that's another seven, so we go on by that seven. 54, 39, very good. Let's have John B's letters. Uh, consonant, please. V. And another. H. And another. N. And a vowel. A. And another. E. And a third. O. And a consonant. M. And a consonant. F. And a final vowel.
Yes, Mr Mayhew. Eight. Mr Blackstone. Uh, seven. OK, John B then, seven. Uh, quested. Quested, yes, use, use of the Q and the U, good. Quested. Eight. Unseated. Very well done. Unseated there. <laughs> ah. As of a horse rider, or indeed a champion. Yeah, yeah. very good, very good indeed. Yes. Well, look at that now, scores. <laughs> I can hardly bet to look. It's 76 and 76. So, John B, then, it's your choice of numbers. Uh, one from the top and any other five, please. OK, thank you, John B. And five, right. We have five and ten and six and one. Nine and 75. And a target, big one, 934. 934 then, 934. Nine three four then, JB. I've lost it. Sorry. You've lost it, JM. I think I've got it, but I'm probably way off here. We'll have to go then. Actually, quickly. Um, seventy-five times nine. No, I've lost it completely. Sorry, sorry. I've, I've just realised what I've done. Okay, tricky one. Can you help us out, Miss V? Uh, I think so. Seventy-five plus nine is eighty-four. Then six plus five is eleven. And if you multiply those two together, you get. Nine two four, and then you can add on the ten. Nine three. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Come on, Carol. They're all saying, "Come on, Tim. Come on, Carol." And you can do it. This one, we need you to do it. You can do it. Now, look. This is seventy six and seventy six. So it is a crucial conundrum. The winner of this uh, is the champion. Of course, just to remind you, if you don't get it and it's a tie after thirty seconds, another conundrum goes in, and we'll do it again, so we get a winner. Get ready. Please now reveal today's final countdown conundrum. Believe it. <laughs> Noah's got it. <laughs> Noah's got it. So this is what it is. <sighs> Signature. Oh, ah. yeah. So, well, it is a tie. It's 76 and 76. So we've got to go through it all over again. Oh. Just pause for breath now. And we're loading another one in. So now we're all set. So please reveal the second, even more crucial, countdown conundrum. There's a bell. Who rang the bell? John M. rang the bell to say? Falsified. Falsified, he said. Well, you can't falsify this. That's fair. Right. Three seconds. Three seconds to come in. And there it is. Well, what a way. What a way to win and what a way to lose. <laughs> They've been through it so many times. And so there it is. So with 86 points, yes, we applauded him now. But we have to do it again. We want to do it again to our number two seed. Yes, John Mayhew. <laughs> the Plymouth Pulverizer. The Plymouth Pulverizer. Well, the Pontypool Pontiff, uh, it's been a great run for you, hasn't it? And yeah, uh, yeah, I know great. you've enjoyed it. It's and been great. It's been a great character. So. We'll have another word with you in a minute, but just for the moment, so we can say that you're not going home empty-handed. You've had all the presents, and, the ca and also you get all this as well. So you get the pen and the Oxford books, the companion to food, uh, and the bags, and the glassware as well. So goodness gracious, you'll need a, you'll need your wife with you, which she is, to, to <laughs> carry all the bags. So thank you very much indeed. So what a great man, number one seed, just just lost, John Braxton.
So, we'll have the presentation of the victories in a minute, but we've had a wonderful run uh, with John. He's ten... How many games now is it? Eleven, isn't it? Eleven, yes, eleven games undefeated and a terrific performance. So here now, just before we move to the presentation, is a little potted history of your career on Countdown. Now we welcome you, John. Hi. Hello. I like my complexion, ruddiest. <laughs> oh, just be a bit exotic, I'll use the Z Zanders. Slightly risky, Manitous. We didn't spot that, did we? No, ah, one second, he says, I'm king of the one seconders. Sufficing, pollution, geniality. Mr. Geniality himself, <laughs> John. Yes, 875. 245. Not meant to be good at the numbers game, is he? The maestro here is coming up with... Intervals. Very, very good. Sundering. The Plymouth pulverizer, John Mayhew. <laughs> well, John, uh, what a performance. Congratulations, and congratulations to the other John as well. He's so what we can say. You've saved yourself a few quid when you get back tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no more trebles to buy. <laughs> Well done. Thank and uh, as regards you, those are your dictionaries. Look, 20 dictionaries, lovely volume dictionaries. What are you going to do with them? I'll build some more shelves. Build some more shelves? Yeah. OK, well, it's been a fantastic series. You couldn't get a closer series. I mean, wonderful all round, hasn't it? Oh, it's been a brilliant series. Six, six, o yeah, six, six Octavians. Octavians. Yep. Little Tanmay. Yeah. Absolutely super. Need more women. Need more women. Please. Yes. And more young girls as well. Oh, yeah. Little young boy. Let's have some young girls. <laughs> OK. Meanwhile, from the old girl, from Susie Dent. <laughs> 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 and Philip. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much indeed. Actually, we're back again on uh, Monday with a brand new series. And guess what? The return of lots of old friends as the champion of champions. Yay. So a lot of old, old and young faces coming back Love next that. week. So see you on Monday for the start of Series 54. See you Good then. Goodbye. <laughs>